In this video, we are going to learn how to write a timer in JavaScript. Now, before we do that, let us first try to understand what is timer. Timer is basically a kind of event that automatically executes after a specified number of milliseconds. Okay, and in order to create timer in JavaScript, we follow this approach. So here is my timer.htm page, and here first let us see that what is there in this page. <coughs> so first we have a label, HTML label simple, whose ID is LBL text, and then we have two button. One is a start timer that is calling test function uh, and another is the stop timer that is calling a stop count function now in the test function that will basically start the timer what we are doing is that we are first in incrementing the count variable and this count variable we have declared public in the scope here where count equal to 0 now my purpose is that after every second I will in increment the 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 value of this particular level or you can say the data of this particular level so it is 0 and after one second it will become 1 after another second it will become 2 and so on so what we are doing is that every time this test function will be called the value of the count will be incremented to 1 and then what we are doing is that we are uh, setting that particular count value as the inner HTML of the label so what will happen this particular text will be replaced with the current value of the count and then we are calling the set timeout this is the JavaScript uh, inbuilt uh, function that is being called and in the, and this function basically accepts two parameter the first parameter is the function to call and the second parameter is after how many milliseconds to call so here we are saying that set timeout and call the function test function means the same function after 1000 milliseconds so it means that after one second so this is a recursive function so what happens is that it this function will call itself okay this function will be called within itself so after every one second the same function the test function will be called and uh, the count will be incremented and the current value will be set here so first let us try to understand this one the start uh, timer so yes now currently it is zero now I am starting that I am starting the timer so you can see that automatically the value of this level is changing to 7, 8, 9, 10 and so on this is happening because of set timeout function and this is the JavaScript inbuilt function I have not written it so it accepts two parameters first the function that it had to execute and the second then after how many milliseconds it has to execute now we have another button called a stop count and on this button we are simply calling the clear timeout uh, JavaScript function by passing the T as the parameter now what is T here T is the same thing that we had written here T equal to set timeout right so T is nothing but a kind of variable you can say now when I will click a stop then you can see that uh, the timer has been stopped so at the time when the level value as 50 I clicked on a stop and it has stopped and when I clicked again a start timer and again it is starting a stop it is stopping so either you can write T or you can simply declare a variable called var T and then you can specify T here so both are same start stop because JavaScript if you will not write where keyword if you directly write any variable JavaScript in internally just declare that as a wide variable so even if you have not written where t at the top it will work fine now now let us try to understand that how to open a pop-up window using JavaScript so for that I have a sample page called popup.htm now here what we are doing is that we have a button called click me and on click of me but button uh, click we are basically calling test function and in the test function we are calling window dot, dot open that is open is again a, a JavaScript um, a function 
and in this we are calling uh, we are giving the first parameter is the as the website or the web page that we have to open second parameter is basically the name of the window in which it has to open so here I am just keeping it blank and the third is basically the features that it has to open with in that window so I am saying that its width should be 500 and height should be 300 so what will happen is that when I will run this page on click of the button it will the dotnet .com website will be opened into a new window and that window height will be 500 sorry width will be 500 and height will be 300 see here this window width is 500 and height is 300 so this is the way to basically open a pop-up window in JavaScript now how to redirect the user from current page to another page using JavaScript now in some scenario you might need to redirect the user from one page to another page on click of a button or on certain action so if you have that kind of scenario then you can use this approach so in this case what we are doing we are we have a button click me and when this button will be clicked we are calling test function and in the test function what we are doing is that we are basically writing location.href equal to the uh, web page where we want to redirect the user so here I'm, I want to redirect the user to itfunda.com so what will happen when I will click the button let me first run this page when I click the button you can see that the I will be redirected to itfunda.com website it is slowly opening yes now in case I want to redirect the user to any local page for example for loop.stm then I will write for loop.stm here and user will be redirected to that particular page as you can see that for loop.stm he is getting redirected to now in case we want to know the URL of the current web page in JavaScript that then we can use location.href so if you will set the its value then it will redirect the user to that page if you will get the value then it will basically give you the current uh, uh, web page URL so this is my current web page URL javascript location.stm see javascript location oops sorry okay it was basically redirecting also so I'm just commenting the redirect one location javascript location.stm javascript location.stm so in order to get the current web page URL you can use location.href and in order to set uh, in order to redirect the user from one page to another page from current page to another page you can set its value and the user will be redirected to on that particular page now how to reload or refresh the current page in JavaScript if you have a scenario where you want to reload or refresh uh, the page on click of a button or on certain action of the user then you can use this methodology where uh, you can simply use location.reload and that will basically reload the page so let me refresh uh, let me run this page and you can see the current date and time is coming now when I will click reload you can see the date time is changing because the page is getting reloaded every time I'm clicking the button so location.reload will basically reload the current page now I think I have already covered this earlier how to find HTML element from the page using its ID so as we have already covered we use document.get element by ID and the ID of the element and by which we can find that element uh, from the page and then if you if we have to get its inner HTML then we call the inner HTML uh, uh, property for example let me show you that okay let's copy paste this test Okay, so here what we are doing when we will click the test function will fire 
and in the alert what we are doing is that we are basically getting the inner HTML means the data in, that is inside the label control so it is 0 so it will give me 0 as alert so 0 now if we let a value do you think it will work it is not why because value is only for the input element like text box or uh, the text area or the drop down and so on so if you have any HTML element like div paragraph label then you will have to use the inner HTML that basically gives the all the HTML content that is inside that particular label now the next uh, how to is how to find a uh, HTML element from the page using HTML tag name so let me show you this uh, with the example here is my code and in this code what we have is that we have two label element on this page and what I wanted to do is that I want to find out the first label so what we are doing we are using doc document.getElements by tag name you can see the elements git hold on yes and then we are writing the label it means that I want to find out all the element of type label and then we are using the indexer so I, I basically want to find out the first element so that's why I have used zero because it is zero based it this will basically give me the array of the label element so if I have to find out the first one then I will have to write zero because it, it will give me the zero based index area and then I am writing dot inner HTML equal to 50 so what it will do is that it will basically change its zero uh, text to 50 so let me run this page you can see that the first label text is getting changed to 50 now how to set HTML element uh, CSS style using JavaScript it's very simple I think we have already covered earlier but let me cover it again here uh, we have a label and we are we, are, we want to change its background color to red so we are uh, we are first finding the element and then we are writing dot style dot style dot background and the color name that you want to change to so I want to change its background color to red so now when I will run this page you will see that its background color will, is changing to red so in, in this way you can basically use so if you have intelligence here it's very easy to change for example if I want to change the foreground color means the text color then I can use the style dot color and you can see that the text color is changing to red so these CSS styles are not similar to the CSS style that you write into the C into the cascading style sheet dot CSS files it is slightly different so that's why you uh, probably need uh, intelligence visual studio intelligence to basically work with them now how to validate a HTML form in JavaScript this is also very very frequently used for example you have a HTML page and you want to validate for a mandatory field on the page so let me show you that here I have a form and on this form first we have a text box called first name and then we have a text box called last name and we have a button now what we want to do is that here because we have a written asterisk mark here against first name uh, yes so we are assuming that the first name is mandatory it means that I want user to write the first name at least into the text box <coughs> now <coughs> in order to validate whether user is writing first name or not what we can do is that we can uh, on the click event of the button we we can write return and the function name so I am my function name is validate the form so this is my validate the, the form function and in this function what we are doing is that we are first retrieving the value of that text box naturally because my 
first name text box is mandatory in this case and then we are checking for the empty value if the value is empty then we are doing uh, we are basically gi giving an alert to the user please specify first name it is mandatory and then we are returning false and if the value is not empty it means that user is entering some data into the first name text box then we are fine so we are simply uh, returning true so the form will be submitted so in this way we can basically validate the form let me run this page so here I'm not hinting anything you can see that I'm getting the alert because it is coming into the first if uh, uh, block and if I will add something here then what is happening is that it is being submitted to the HTML page.htm HTML page.htm the same that is being mentioned here in the actions attribute of the form so this is the way to basically validate the form in JavaScript that's it thank you for watching